So tonight we're investigating a Hunter X9000A chassis that uh, was having trouble with its degauss circuit. Basically uh, the, it would power up and the monitor would just be all out of whack and you've got colours distorted everywhere and everything which always points, uh, or pretty much all, nearly always points towards the degaussing circuit. Uh, the degaussing circuit is controlled by about three components basically and in, uh, in the circuit um, you have a, a PTC thermistor here and a couple of capacitors uh, one here and one all the way back uh, right in the back of there um, this particular model of chassis the 9000A um, has a, a link that's sort of down there which you can uh, then solder some a remote wire onto and break a, break a permanent link which is P34 um, and then you can actually have a push button to degauss if you really want to. Um, what this one was doing was just not outputting absolutely anything on the degauss coil. So what I've done is I've set up, uh, set up on the test, on the test bench here. Um, now it's important to note there's some safety you've got to listen to about doing anything like this. When working on monitor chassis, beware. First of all, um, there's two different types of voltages that can be used, especially on the older chassis that run on isolation transformers. Some of you'll know it, some of you won't. Um, these Hunter X ones, uh, the 900, 9000, 9110 series monitors work off an isolation transformer and work on a voltage of around 120 volts, 125 volts on the actual monitor side of it, the display side. And the degaussing circuit works on 240 volts. Um, on these particular models. Now ordinarily you have this connector down the back here which is a four pin green connector so I'll just turn the chassis slightly a four pin green connector and the left on this particular on the left two pins down there are the isolation transformer and the right two pins are the 240 volts DC needed for the degaussing circuit. Now in this case I have a test bench su uh, test supply which is down here on the floor um, so we can zoom in on that just quickly. It's made up of a, an old Sega PSU system with an isolation transformer and a, a jammer switcher uh, type of transformer on that. And what I've done is I've isolated the inputs. So I've taken the inputs off um, off the power brick where it would normally uh, supply voltage to this brick here, which would give me the isolated 100 and, uh, 130 volts and, uh, 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 for the chassis. Uh, for the main display side of it. So, right around here. So, I have taken those off so I absolutely do not get um, the rest of the chassis starting up. Specifically, I don't want the flyback to start up. That's this bit over here for those of you who haven't looked at the monitor chassis before. Coming out of there for one of these is around about 20,000 volts. Um, I've been talking to a few people and <laughs> it's dangerous stuff this. Don't play with it if you don't know what you're doing. I don't consider myself to be a complete expert, but I do know, you know, some things to be able to is um, insulate myself from any disasters. I've isolated the power supply and I've also placed the anode cap that's the bit that distributes the um, hundreds, of, you know, the 20,000 volt side of it. I've isolated that in something that can't conduct through. So it's not going to get powered up. That's a secondary safety precaution. If I was working on the live side of the chassis with the display, you know, the deflection, the HV side of it, before I power up the chassis, I would take the precaution of hooking it up to a tube. Let it, let it be attached to the thing it's supposed to be attached to to test it. The monitor gurus on the forums have other ways of doing this I don't want to get into that and I don't want to suggest anything to anybody else okay so what should happen when the chassis starts up is that this circuit this here basically acts like the old um, the best way I can describe it and me and a, a friend were talking about it this afternoon the best way I can describe it is that this uh, component and the capacitors act a little bit like the 
um, electronics class in high school um, uh, experiment of how capacitance works, where you have a battery, a bulb and a capacitor. And when you switch the battery on, the bulb comes on for a second and then uh, basically disappears to nothing. And then you take the power off and suddenly the bulb lights up again because the capacitor starts to discharge. Now it's about as simple a way as I can explain what the degaussing circuit does. It basically turns on 240 volts to the coil that goes around the back of the monitor, um, which would normally hook on to here. And it will then reduce that voltage away from it slowly. Now the effect of that is that it creates a magnetic field which pulls polarisation towards the edge of the screen um, in things called uh, like the shadow mask and a few other things. I'm not, I don't fully understand that side of it. I know that basically this is what sorts it out and effectively you know, co correcting the magnetic field is what's basically needed here. Uh, for the purpose of this experiment, like I say, I've isolated the isolation side of it so the 160 volts isn't going to start. I've looked on the schematic, that's how I know that the 240 volts is just used in this particular circuit. I followed it through, it's not used anywhere else on this particular chassis, might be on other ones, but we're dealing with a Hantrex 9000A for this particular thing. I've got my voltmeter hooked up, and that's just basically so I can prove that there's 240 volts going in to the back end of the chassis. Um, let's just check it, yep, yeah, they're definitely pushed home and they're not earthing out, they're not shorting between each other. Uh, down here, I've got an ordinary incandescent light bulb, and that's hooked onto the plus and minus connectors, which is where your coil would go around the outside of the tube. And then, hopefully, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to power the uh, I'm going to power the power supply on down here on the floor, and what you should see is that light bulb come on, and then slowly dim out. Okay, so let's give that a shot. And that is basically what is happening around your, uh, your the outside of the screen when the degaussing circuit works. Now the problem with this particular chassis is when it wasn't working, I've traced it through, and I actually found the fault. Um, let's see if I can take a little bit further, so you can see it, and I'll zoom in on the problem after <laughs> after changing out the PTC component. I'm not going to touch it because it does get quite warm after it's just been on. And it just and it can't be refired either straight away. It has to be uh, it has to be allowed to cool down. So I'm going to try and zoom in on exactly where the problem was. Like I say, I changed the PTC this afternoon, thinking that was going to be it, and didn't think and and I, and I actually metered across the fuses. Down there, there's two fuses. The back one near the green connector is the main. Uh, that's the fuse for the deflection side of it over here, where the HV is, and the other one. Uh, next to that is the fuse holder for the degaussing circuit. I metered it on top of the fuse and was getting continuity. What I didn't do was meter it underneath the chassis to see what was happening there. And after having a little bit of a look underneath um, the, and reflowing all the solder joints and everything basically, there was no problem underneath the chassis. What it was, is it just wasn't making full contact with the fuse. So. Um, I've actually lifted it out and reseated it and adjusted it slightly just to make it a little bit tighter and it works again perfectly well. So it now grips the fuse exactly as it should do. Um, and it works as you've just seen. And the meter a few moments ago in the shot would have showed 252 volts which is basically what um, what voltage was getting uh, to the power, uh, power side of the chassis. So. This is now going to go back into its machine and go back into service and hopefully now fix that uh, that particular thing, it should uh, sort itself out. So, just one last thing I'll just show you if I zoom back out again. What I did, uh, I'm not going to actually touch the chassis, not because I think it's live or anything, just purely because that we've got zoom on the camera and things like that, so why should we need to? It has to come into focus. Okay, so down there, basically, you've got two grey cables. Well, for one of the um, one of the terminal connectors uh, in a little bit of insulation tape. It's just purely to stop it shorting out against the other one. There's no other reason because these green connectors don't seem to be available anymore. Otherwise, I would make a proper test lead up for it. And that's it. All we did then was hook it literally onto the back end of the light bulb down there. Turn that around. 
So I literally just soldered something back of the light bulb. And that's all there is to it. We now have one working Dego circuit fixed. Okay, so that's that monitor sorted. I'll go back in the cab. I can finally play Pac-Man without having to worry about if I move the machine, it's going to muck up. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you find it uh, interesting. Um, please do go ahead and click subscribe to the channel, send me some comments uh, below. Um, you know, the usual sort of thing, and um, find us, uh, follow us on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash retrogamesparty. See you soon.